Can I begin to share the screen? Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, welcome to our third session of Catalyst Day. These are Catalyst 300 presentations. And the first presentation uh, here at 10 a.m. is titled Ripping Students Against Violent Crimes, Preventing Sex Trafficking in Milwaukee. And the presenters are Sarah King, Zoe Stieg, Evan Barbarian, Hannah Rybeck, and Kyle Jimenez. Hi, I'm Zoe. I'm Evan. I'm Kyle. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, I'm Hannah. Today we will be talking about our challenge, which is violence and more specifically the topic of sex trafficking. Sex trafficking is the exploitation of children and adults who will be used for sex and other labors. Sex, sex trafficking is a prevalent crime across the U.S. and across the world. We will we researched the U.S. and decided to zoom in on the Midwest to focus on one place, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. While researching, we found a lot of interesting facts and tables that will be shown later. Along with our research, we contacted the Milwaukee Police Department. Evan will now talk about the significance and harm of sex trafficking. So yes, as Zoe mentioned, um, our challenge was violence and more specifically the topic of sex trafficking. And sex trafficking is a problem at large um, throughout the world. In fact, ECPAT uh, reported that sex trafficking was the third largest crime industry in the world behind drugs and armed trafficking. So this is kind of why we decided to start looking into the problem of sex trafficking. Um, and then as we get into more specifically the United States, uh, the US National Human Trafficking Hotline actually reported and collected data in 2019, um, and they came into contact of 11,500 cases throughout the United States uh, that involved 22,326 unique victims or survivors that were involved in these cases. Um, and this map is to uh, begin to visualize that. So this was from um, the US National Human Trafficking Hotline. And all the darker red spots that you see around the map are the um, more highly reported areas of these 11,500 cases of sex trafficking throughout the United States. More specifically, we start to look at Milwaukee, Wisconsin um, and the problem of sex trafficking in this urban state that is in the state that we uh, are all currently in or most of us are currently in. Um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin from the same report from the US National Human Trafficking Hotline uh, reported 94 cases within the city alone. Um, and this was likely an underreported statistic uh, due to victims' fear of stigmas being placed on them when they uh, are reported and have experienced sex trafficking. The demographic that surrounds uh, the crime of sex trafficking, uh, they, the crime takes advantage of some of our most vulnerable groups as women and children. Um, from this report or from the US National Trafficking Hotline, uh, we see the break demographics in the image on your left. You see of the 11,500 cases reported in 2019, 9,357 included a female victim. Uh, and then on the, image on the right is the breakdown of the age that they were trafficked at. And of the 2,326 unique victims or survivors that they came into contact in 19, 5,359 were minors. And as we see the rates that were reported, that 15,532 unknown victims or survivors, likely a large percentage of that were also minors as well. 
And as we said, additionally, sex trafficking is a violent crime and the effects on victims are long-term and affect their standing in society as well. So these victims are experiencing immense, uh, immense physical and emotional uh, abuse from their traffickers. These things can include common injuries uh, from physical abuse, such as broken bones and bruises. Uh, victims uh, report a higher rate of sexually transmitted diseases because of the sexual activities that they are put through, through sex trafficking. Uh, and then more of emotional uh, long-term effects include post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, uh, and as well as a higher rate of mental illnesses found in victims and survivors, such as depression and anxiety, which could very well lead to a higher rate uh, of suicide within our victims or survivors of sex trafficking. It is also important to note that uh, victims and, sex er, and survivors of sex trafficking are often marginalized from society uh, and place, uh, society places negative stigmas on people that are reported to be victims of sexual trafficking. Uh, and this makes it extremely difficult for victims and survivors to come back into society after experiencing such a traumatic event, such as being trafficked. One, one of the first organizations that combat trafficking, human trafficking, is an organization called Polar Ways. They have been around, have been around over 10 years to help survivors, law enforcement, and such more. And the first thing you see from 2018, 2019, is the, is the, in, the growth of, of hotline, hotlines, the trafficker hotlines been increased through, through survivors, survivors running contacts, uh, like police officers, law enforcement throughout the United States. The most, the most, the most growth is, is phone calls because the, the social interaction is more important at the time to have desperate as, of help they need. And Polaways, Polaways works with work with Capital One to form form a, a hackathon group like like data data scientists, computer scientists, law enforcement, anti anti money laundering investigators and survivors to to how to identify to identify pimps and traffickers easier on the streets and also including how to find operation like trafficking operations through like information they can help they can get from from both organizations. And the thing about the, the victim is the victim has close ties of getting information from from this pin. So again, like like information, credit confirmation, formal bait checks, uh, formal transfer, online money transfer, and retail checking, cashing. That this, the the victim has close ties of seeing seeing in person how it happens, and that yeah, can help help law enforcement a lot in the long run. And Polaroids does help survive social media to the voice to voice their experience and their pain and sadness through what they have been uh, during the process before and during and after being uh, being trafficked. And the thing is that they, they use they use the hashtag Me Too on social media to help to connect with other survivors to tell their stories of other people to avoid to avoid this and how to help others to overcome this and also spread awareness throughout throughout the United States. And the next organization is Truckers Against Traffickers. And this organization is a form of truckers like bus drivers, diesel truckers, and sex more across the United States. That these, these drivers are equipped and educated by educated to combat trafficking and, and they help law enforcement to recognize and report trafficking throughout the United States. And there's been there's been a total of 2,625 calls calls been made to trafficking hotlines. The, the victim, the victim, uh, the victims call for like getting help from the trap, the truckers, to help them to get out, to get out of, of, of trafficking. And uh, there's been a brief of uh, 694 cases been been called upon, and there's been 1,268 uh, victims identified and and escaped from from trafficking. And there's been a total of 975, 643,000 uh, registered truckers against traffic uh, trafficking trained to help law enforcement and survivors to get out of trafficking.
Um, Anne's House is a program that's based in Chicago that serves as a program similar to a rehabilitation house. It was opened in 2010 by the Salvation Army in affiliation with the Partnership to Rescue Our Minors from Sexual Exploitation or the Promise Program. Anne's House is women exclusively and they're between the ages of 12 and 21. And Anne's can house up to eight women at any given time. Anne's is also licensed as a welfare agency and a group home and was designed to address the issue of limited living options available in the Chicago area and give the women who live there a sense of regained independence. Uh, the women who are involved in the program voluntarily choose to be there. However, they must also receive a referral form from one of a number of channels, including hospitals, social service agencies, local law enforcement, and the like. Um, although this solution has had its fair share of successes, the major downfall is the limited amount of space available, as well as the fact that they have not yet expanded to create more facilities like this. And then we have Pathfinders. Pathfinders is a street outreach program in Milwaukee that offers confidential interaction for victims of a number of different traumas, including uh, human trafficking or sexual exploitation. Pathfinders also offers a separate program called New Paths, and this is to help youth navigate medical, legal, and social service programs that they may come into contact with on their journey to recover from their traumas. Pathfinders also offers services through a program called Collaborative Rapid Access for Youth, or CRAE. And CRAE is an after-hours emergency medical and legal accompaniment program for youth and young adults ages 11 to 25 who have been commercially sexually exploited. They specifically provide accompaniment during medical exams or interview with law enforcement that these youth may be subject to, and their services are available Mondays through Fridays from 4 p.m. to midnight. Um, as of 2018, Cray reported that 6,852 youth and young adults accessed their resources in some way, and of that number, 963 of them were receiving more intensive management. Both Pathfinders and Cray are solutions that are once again focused on the intervention rather than the prevention of sex trafficking acts, and being local programs that are street outreach and after hours, both offer limited support in the sense that they can only tackle a small portion of the city. And if the children are taken out of the city, there's no way to continue to offer them assistance. As far as the current police involvement in Milwaukee, our group chose to conduct a phone interview with members of the Milwaukee Police Department, which I conducted myself. I spoke with Manuel Gutierrez, who is a crime analyst, as well as Maria Razek, who is a victim advocate. Maria and Manuel were able to inform us that they are more focused on the in-the-moment intervention of sex trafficking than they are on the prevention. They were also able to inform us that their current task force is a more locally focused task force. However, they do provide data to officials on the federal level. Maria and Manuel were also the ones to point us in the direction of looking into Pathfinders and Cray. And based on the information we gathered from them, we would want to create our own special task force called STOP or Sex Trafficking Prevention and Overwatch. We are choosing to focus our solution specifically on the city of Milwaukee, as Manuel mentioned to us that they are a very high volume area for trafficking. We're also choosing Milwaukee due to the passage of I-94 through the city. Manuel also mentioned that they have recorded many cell phones of traffickers and victims pinging along I-94. And the graphic on the right there just shows a map of the police districts in Milwaukee. And to begin our solution, we would want to choose a centrally located district as our trial area. So moving into the prevention and education, we will be utilizing our task force stop through the school system and the Milwaukee Public School Districts. First, we will um, need to design and create a program based on the information we collect using other aspects of our innovation. We would like to start with the Milwaukee public area and implement mandated training programs and curriculums for both the staff and students. To do this, we need to propose the idea to the Board of Education in the district and allow them to approve. 
from there, we can contact other superintendents of other districts as our program slowly grows. Our end goal would be to start in this school district and this would hopefully lead to the rest of the state of Wisconsin as long as the program is effective. So the educators and staff will attend an awareness and internet safety training and become certified as an advocate and resource for the students. These trainings will be done through the Shared Hope Organization and through Homeland Security. The school district will then create a curriculum for grades six through 12 or middle school through high school about the signs and risks, awareness, prevention, and resources of sex trafficking once a year. The curriculum will be created based on the Wisconsin Health Standards and Age Appropriate Elements. Grades K through 12 of them will have a five module training assembly given by a guest speaker from the organization or a trained staff member or community member. We will be utilizing the Love Phone 46 organization with their program, Not a Hashtag Number. And this includes an introduction to human trafficking, culture and society, red flags and relationships, vulnerability and resilience, and reducing risky behavior. These training programs and curriculums will be revisited um, once a year to make sure that the information being given is up to date and current. And implementing this curriculum will not only teach students, staff and the community members what the problem is, but how to avoid it, where to get help and learn appropriate refusal skills. So another one of the tasks for our task force stop that um, they would be implementing throughout the city of Milwaukee would be an emergency GPS device. Um, this GPS device would have direct contact to local authorities GPS pane. Uh, similar to the image uh, on the screen, be designed as a keychain, and this keychain would have a small device with a button on it, and if that button is held for more than five seconds, it would alert local authorities to um, trafficking experience happening uh, the, and they would be able to report to it and they would know where it is due to a GPS ping that they would only have access to. Uh, this GPS would only be active when the button is held for five seconds. So similar to uh, locationing devices on a cell phone, uh, hopefully, or we suspect that uh, community members would not be nervous about the privacy issues of having a, a safety tracker on them as long as it is only active when they need it. Uh, this device would be innovative because we are attempting to prevent instead of intervene. So we are trying to get the sex trafficking cases down and the crime before it actually happens or in the very early stages before victims are moved from house to house or possibly moved out of state by their traffickers. Uh, Information that we collect from this would also be useful to provide to federal, like, federal programs like Polaris. Uh, and the cost of this production, we would try to keep down due to locally producing it, and then also partnering with programs and community partners uh, that we'll talk about in funding in, in a bit. So the main goal of this emergency GPS device is to get it to our most vulnerable groups, such as women and children, and try to prevent sex trafficking cases before they happen or in the very early stages while pairing with local law enforcement. Uh, and we would rate the success and effectiveness of this device due to um, a decrease in number of cases in the city of Milwaukee in uh, If we do see this success and we do find it effective because we see cases start to go down, then we could open up the production of an emergency GPS device uh, like this one uh, and make it more widely available to uh, more and more of our vulnerables. As far as funding goes for this solution, we would want to look into the reallocation of current police funding, which I'll break down further in a moment here as well as looking into grants such as the Barclay GL Seed Grants that are focused on providing funding for programs that are involved in the betterment of humanity with their typical grant amount being around $5,000. If we were unable to receive this grant, then we would look into other grants as well as private donations to help fund our cause. And this image here shows the Milwaukee Police Department budget breakdown 
as you can see by the first red box, about two thirds of the budget goes to salaries alone, which is quite a lot. However, we would not look into reallocating this section of the budget as it wouldn't make much sense to possibly hire more people for our task force and have everyone be paid less. Instead, we would look into reallocating the special funds budget, which is highlighted in the lower red box. In their budget breakdown, it is not stated what these special funds are used for, so it may be possible for us to use a portion of those funds for our purposes. Uh, before the timeline, it is important to note that um, are obviously barriers um, that we might run into while creating these uh, innovative solutions. Um, one of the biggest ones would be limited funding. And if we do not receive as much as we wanted from some of the grants that we applied for or private donations and community partnerships don't follow as we expected. Uh, if that is the case, we would try to combat this with uh, trying to receive more funds from the police department or just have to downscale some of the productions of our, of our innovative ideas. Also a big one with the uh, emergency GPS device would be the responsibility of the device uh, and the misuse and misinformation that we could receive from either misclicks of the button. And we would try to combat this on the emergency GPS device with having a fail safe that if someone accidentally presses it or it is a false alarm, we would have a second smaller button that someone could press because it is misinformation or a misclick. So the timeline for this project though, would be early in the first year, we would obviously establish stop or sex trafficking over Washington and start applying for the federal grants that we need. We would also reallocate funds for the special task force from those special funding uh, programs or parts of the budget that Sarah had mentioned from the Milwaukee Police Department. And then at the end of year two, if all those funds do come through, begin production of the GPS devices and the educational programs. Uh, coming into year two is our implementation year, and we would be able to implement educational programs within the Milwaukee Public School Districts. And we'd also be able to begin to make this device available to the public, and most importantly, our most vulnerable uh, groups, such as women and children. And then come year three, we finally have a year, year's worth of feedback and information from the GPS device and educational programs and we can take that information and rate the effect of our applied innovation solutions within the city of Milwaukee. And if, if seen successful and the feedback is good and we can make improvements, then we can begin to expand our uh, innovation solution and hopefully begin to decrease the overall crime of sector. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's open this up for questions. You can put them in the chat or you can just identify yourselves or just chime in. A uh, question. Um, you mentioned a lot of local initiatives to, to start this initiative. Um, and you didn't mention too many things happening at the federal level. Is there funding available at the federal level? I know you referred to federal funding, but are there any larger scale programs that would be more national in scope versus uh, local? Sure. So um, some federal things, uh, as we said, we would um, apply for federal seed grants, such as like the Barclay Geo. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't really hear you. Did you ask about like national programs versus local programs? Yes, national programs. Yes. So um, national programs such as uh, like Polaris, um, some downfalls from national programs like that are that they are, um, it's hard, like sex trafficking is a very specific, um, sometimes you do need to get it local in order to start decreasing because trying to tackle national programming um, is difficult. Um, Polaris is doing an okay job at it, but they are mainly online national program. Uh, and a deficit from that is that they can't actually physically begin to try to uh, prevent these sex trafficking experiences and crimes from happening. Um, but getting funding, if that's like the main part of your question, um, trying to compete with a national program is obviously going to be difficult. And that's why um, we try to uh, put an emphasis on 
local community partnerships, such as the Medical College of Wisconsin, at least for starters in Milwaukee. Uh, and then also different uh, like SNAP programs, they could uh, help us try to bring down the overall cost of certain things as emergency deep GPS devices. Evan, can you unshare your screen so we can see your, your group as you answer some more questions? Yes. Wells has a question. I had a question about the, the GPS device. Um, so if you have an alternative button that cancels the original button, what keeps the, I guess, sex, sex traffic curve from just pressing that button, I guess, to cancel the call. Right, and that is a thought we had. Um, that's where kind of like the responsibility of the device comes into play. Um, we would be hoping that uh, this would be like a concealed device so that hopefully the trafficker would not find it. Um, we did initially not have the fail safe button and obviously working with like a local tech company, maybe they could have uh, a better solution on some kind of fail safe uh, to try to um, stray away from misinformation and misclicks. Uh, we don't expect to have many misclicks though, um, simply because you have to hold the button for more than five seconds. Um, so that is, that is a very good point. And that is something that we thought of. This was just kind of like an initial possible quick fix that we could try to prevent from. Question from George in the chat. Uh, what would you do if someone thought the device was a privacy violation? Yes, so um, I did state before, uh, there are certain legislation, especially in Wisconsin, that uh, denies uh, like the police or um, people using your GPS information against you in the court of law. Um, so if there is anything that goes to um, that big, like you have a court case or something, they cannot use that against you. But also we like to relate it to like your location services on your phone. So most people are carrying around their phones and have uh, location services on um, and GPS. And I don't think they're really, at least a majority are not worried about um, privacy issues with that. So with this, it'd kind of be something similar where if you kept it on you, the GPS would not be active until you held that button. And likely you would want someone to know where you are and you would want someone to use, especially if the local law enforcement's only have um, access to this GPS ping, um, that would be uh, a sort of a way to combat like constant privacy issues. It would only be active when you activate it. Likely community members would want someone to know where they are if like a sex trafficking experience is, is taking place. Yeah, and I just wanna chime in here also, it would be an optional service for those who have been known to be a victim. It's not gonna be required that if you're a victim of sex trafficking and you come forward, you must carry this device on your person. So if someone was worried about the privacy aspect, it is an optional service. Another question in chat. You talked about implementing a curriculum in area schools. Would this be required or would parents be allowed to sign a form to not allow their child to attend these sessions? I believe, um, and I'll speak, I know um, Hannah did most of the educational programming but uh, it would be similar to other programs um, like that. So there, there could be an opt out portion of it um, if parents do not feel comfortable um, with their kids uh, learning about human and sex trafficking um, or going through that process if they think it's too much or they think it, um, there, yes. The, the short answer, yes, there would be an opt out um, for students uh, if their parents do not feel comfortable with that. Okay, I think we're gonna have to uh, move to the next session, but thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you guys.